Okay, let's now take a look at one of the most popular software programs for doing sound design and editing and recording. It's called Audacity, and Audacity is a free program which runs on Macintosh, uh, PC, and Unix operating systems. So it uh, has a very uh, robust set of uh, operations and effect processing and really is, is a really great program, particularly since it's free. So to download that program, if you would go to uh, Audacity, dot sourceforge.net, there's the address, and then uh, click on whichever one of these uh, your operating system is. Once you click on that, it should automatically download to your computer, probably will go into your download folder. Uh, double click on the icon at that point and it will um, put the application in, into your application folder. Once you have opened the application, it will take you to the um, Actually, the application will look like this when you open up Audacity, and the first thing you'll see is this welcome screen, and there are a couple of uh, internet clicks here that I want to point out, quick help, manual, and also the wiki. So this is where you would get any information about how to run the program. The manual is actually a very good manual. The quick help you can access from the program, which is very helpful in, in learning the program. So I recommend that uh, you go to the manual. So let's go back to the manual and we will uh, see how this program works. So when you click on manual, it brings you to this page, which is the uh, overview of topics. So let's take a look at some of the primary functions of this. If I scroll down here, we're going we're gonna to go through uh, several of these menus here. Let me just show you the reference first. So this is the screen. When we do record something in Audacity, it will look something like this. <laughs> even though the particular ordering of these functions we can move around and customize if we want. Uh, but let's take a look at each of these 12 different functions before we get to the program. So the first one is the menu bar, and we can go into each of these. So the menu bar will have File, Edit, View, Transport, Track, Generate Effects, Analyze, uh, Window Only for Mac, and the Help menu. So obviously File is working with uh, saving and so forth. Edit is where we'll be doing a lot of the uh, cutting and pasting and editing the, uh, the different file formats. Um, okay, I think we'll go back to these later once we get to the program. I just want to show what those are. So those are all the, st the standard menu bars. Now the second one here is the pretty standard transport toolbar. Uh, where click on this, it'll take us through play, stop, and then skip to the start or skip to the end, and then record. Um, and you can reorder these as well. So this is pretty standard transport. The third one is the tools, which is these six icons here. And let's go through each of those. The first one, which is this one, is the selection tool. Uh, when you click on this one, then you'll be able to click and drag over parts of your audio uh, file for cutting, uh, pasting, uh, so forth. So this will be one of, one of your primary tools that we'll, we'll be using will be, will be the um, selection tool. The second one <clears throat> is an envelope tool, which is a really great little tool. It allows us, allows us to uh, change the volume of certain sections of the piece just by clicking and dragging over it. And it makes a very smooth uh, curve automatically in any kind of volume changes. So we'll be using this one quite a bit as well. The third one is a draw. We probably won't be using this one as much. Once you have zoomed in, <clears throat> the next one actually is zoom. The fourth one here is zoom. Once you have zoomed in, which all you have to do is click that one, then you can take the draw tool and actually redraw the file down at the micro level. So it's really good if you're uh, creating samples where you're trying to uh, make individual samples loop effectively so that the end of the sample matches the, the front of the sample. So it really is a, a, a nice, very powerful tool. But we won't, in this particular program, uh, be getting down to that micro level too much. The next tool, which is this one here, is the time shift tool, and we will be using that one quite a bit. This is which allows us to click and drag, or move the sound file around, uh, or multiple sound files. And we can shift click it into, to select several audio files at one time. And then the final one is a multi-tool. Let's go down to the multi. So the multi-tool uh, combines all five of the other tools into one, but they're not all necessarily available. If I click on here, I can take you to, to show you. So depending on where you move your cursor over the audio file, and what the function is, it will then pop up one of the five functions. So uh, we won't be using all of these, but the multi-tool, if you get uh, into this, can be a real handy little tool because you don't have to go back and switch each time to the other tools. So 
that was the um, tool, toolbar. The next is the meter toolbar, the number four here. So if we take a look at that, you've got two main meters here. You've got the playback levels, and then we've got the recording levels, which you can adjust either one of those from this standard here. Uh, those are pretty standard uh, as well. <clears throat> number five is this section here. We also have a mixer toolbar, and this would be for individual tracks that we could assign the individual uh, mixer volumes, both the input and output as well. So a little bit more control there. Number six is this series here, and this is the one we'll be using quite a bit, which is our edit toolbar going to here. <clears throat> and these are standard cut, copy, paste, which I'm sure you have commands on your computer, which you can do that as well, and those are standard. The trim would be where we highlight a certain section of the audio file, and we hit the trim button. What it will do is get delete everything else except what's under the selected file. So that's why it's good to cut out the end or the beginning of things very easily. Uh, silence is just the opposite. Whatever you select, you have a silence that is created over that section. And then you can also undo what you just did, the last editing operation, or you can redo. The sync button is uh, used occasionally if you want to move a lot of tracks and you want them to sync together, to stay together, then uh, you can have one uh, and move that one along, but they'll all go together. So that's sometimes good as you get into a piece and you don't want to lose your synchronization there. And then zoom in, zoom out. Uh, for seeing a smaller, uh, obviously, the section of the, of the audio file. This is a great uh, tool here, the Zoom Selection and the Fits, uh, Fit Project. So if you want to have the whole project just show up on the screen on your laptop uh, or, or your desktop, then click that and the whole thing will just fit into the window that you're looking at. And then the same thing for if you want to just have a selection of it that you highlight and then click that, and then that will expand to be the full desktop. So it's really uh, some great functions exist here in the edit toolbar. Going on, we have the transcription toolbar. This one is uh, kind of a nice one. If you want to change the playback speed of a button, uh, you can move this anywhere from 0 0.01 times to three times as fast. And that's kind of nice when you need to slow something down and really hear it over and over to hear what's going on at the micro level. So this is called the transcription toolbar. Number eight, which is here, uh, this is a series of uh, pull downs here. This is our device toolbar. This is where you would set exactly which kind of host the sound card that you're using. So you may only have one if you have a laptop or something. You may just have an internal sound card with the uh, internal output device and then the internal mic that's built in. Uh, but you can also uh, specify either a mono input or a stereo input here. On many computers, uh, the one I'm working on currently, has multiple audio interfaces uh, plugged into it. So I have a, when I click on one of these, uh, it will have a, a list of pull downs that I can choose which audio interface I want. And we'll talk more about that uh, a little bit later. But you can sort of see here are some of the typical ones that you might find on, on uh, various computers. Next, number nine, is the timeline. And I think that's pretty descriptive. Uh, it's basically you can set it up in seconds. <clears throat> and this is what you'll be following as far, as far as how long you're uh, obviously your timeline is. <clears throat> Number 10 is the track control window, which is this window here. And this uh, this uh, first button here, which is the uh, uh, <clears throat> track down, uh, drop down menu. Let me click on this and just show you. Here's an example of what you would get. You would, you could specify to move the track up or down. You could change the waveform. Wave you can pull up a spectrogram. Uh, you can look at a, a pitch designation of it. Uh, you can merge the mono to make it a left channel or a right channel. You can change the sample. So it's it's got a lot of different aspects to it. So you can see here, we'll come back to some of these later, where you can um, look at the waveform. And you can actually change that to a spectrogram so you can see the spectral content in a particular sound, the overtone series, uh, or whatever uh, frequencies are above the fundamental. And uh, we'll come back to those a little bit later. So the track down menu is uh, one that we'll be using quite a bit. <laughs> then you can also mute the track. So if you want to hear the other tracks, and just you can mute this one or vice versa. If you want to hear this one and, and mute all the other ones, hit the solo button here and it will just do the opposite. And then you've got a gain slider and a pan slider, which can move move the sound file in, uh, to the stereo field of left, left or right. And the gain would be just a volume for that. And we can collapse the track and make it smaller if we want. And then we have information here uh, about the, it is a stereo track, it's 44 
uh, 0.1 kilohertz is the sampling rate, and then it's a 32-bit uh, floating point number on that. And then here's our sync lot uh, indicator and uh, the vertical scale, which we'll talk more about a little bit later. Um, and then how to split or join tracks together, which is also part of this. And we can change the height and, uh, of the uh, display here, which is which is nice when you're working with uh, small point editing. And then how to work with other tracks. All right, going ahead. <clears throat> So after audio track, uh, oh, that's giving up moving to our audio track, which is this area here. This is the primary graphic area that we will be using for doing, uh, for visualizing the audio files and for clicking and dragging and so forth. So if you look here, you'll see a few parameters you know, where you can specify whether it's stereo, two track, left channel is always on the top, right channel is on the bottom. And if you have a single audio uh, a track, um, and then we'll be able to change some of this with the track control panels that we've already gone over. And going finally, then at the bottom down here, number 12, is the selection toolbar. And you see here you've got uh, the projection uh, project rate, which is the sampling rate, which is 44.1 kilohertz. We can change that if we want a higher or lower sampling rate. And then we've got the capability of, of uh, snapping to so that anything, any file you put into the track, it will snap to a selection start or endpoint uh, or, or position. And that's some information about how all that works, but pretty, pretty straightforward. So those are the 12 different tools that we will have in our file. And when we come back, we'll go through each of these and do some recording and show you how to manipulate the sound using the, these 12. Okay, let's now try to record sound into Audacity uh, using a microphone. Let's talk about how to uh, think about all the different things we need to get set up in order to do that. If we go back to our Audacity manual, you will see here on the tutorials uh, your first recording, which we're going to walk through that. Uh, once we finish this, we will go through, once we get the sound into the computer, we will then explore the different kind of effects processing, which we will go over to <clears throat> this, uh, finding the correct effect which would take us through the different kind of generators, analyzers, and effects processors that we can apply to the sound file. So let's go through the tutorial on your first recording. <clears throat> and we see here we, we have to connect up uh, the equipment to make sure that we have sound that we can uh, capture into the computer. And we have either a microphone or an instrument or a mixer. So we're going to be doing microphone first. <clears throat> so when we look at that, if you have an internal microphone, in your computer already, then you just have to specify that in the software for Audacity. But if you need to plug a microphone in, you're going to have to have uh, several of these options to look at. Many microphones will have what is called a, a mono mini plug, which is just a single channel. Remember on our plugs, we have two different kind of uh, points of contact for a mini plug. And then if you have a stereo mini plug, which is what you would find on your, your headphones also, because we would have a left and right channels. Um, or if you have a stereo, uh, stereo microphone, you would have the same thing. That's a TRS configuration here. So either one of those uh, would plug into most Windows uh, computers. And if you have this kind of uh, XLR plug coming off your microphone, then you're going to have to go through a separate kind of box uh, to convert that. So you need to buy some kind of adapter, uh, some kind of interface, uh, or a mixer that has a digital uh, connection to a USB plug. So many times you can uh, get a small mixer, a digital mixer, or if you have some kind of small digital interface that you can plug an XLR plug into from a microphone and then uh, convert that to a USB to plug into your microphone. So generally if your computer does not have a mini plug option on it, then you're going to have to purchase some kind of uh, converter box to, to get the microphone sound into the digital uh, 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 format that will be read by the computer. So if you have a mixer, same thing. Sometimes your mixer you could take the uh, RCA plug output, the stereo output off that mixer, and then go into a stereo mini plug. So you'd have to purchase one of these to get it into your computer. So those are the options we need to think about uh, to make sure. You can also buy a USB microphone, which is uh, many companies such as Logitech, Samsung, Naughty, Audio Technica, all make um, USB microphones, which are usually uh, condenser microphones that have a USB connection built into it. So you don't have to do anything, but just plug it directly into your computer. So that's an another simple option. All right, so once you've got some kind of <clears throat> microphone plugged into your computer, then we would need to take a look at um, the settings within uh, Audacity to get ready to record. 
So we have to set the sample rate. Remember the sample rate is how many different you know, bits of information are uh, being assigned to the sound as it's recorded in, in the um, analog to digital conversion process. So when the sound is coming in through a microphone, it's going to be an electrical uh, signal coming off the mic cable, and then it'll get converted into uh, a digital mapping of that, which is uh, we have to have some kind of sampling rate where we take a picture, essentially, of the sound at so many times per second. The more accurate representation of the sound obviously will be a higher sampling rate because we get a more uh, precise measurement of the sound waveform as it comes through. So in general, your sampling rate is going to be better if it's higher, uh, depending on the quality of your equipment, your microphone, and also the processing speed of your computer. Uh, there is a point of no return on that sometimes. So generally 44.1 kilohertz or 44,000 uh, uh, times per second. It's kind of a standard that when the uh, CD, CDs first came out in the early 90s, that was the one that was adopted as the standard. Many recordings today uh, tend to be a little bit higher than that for most recordings at 48,000 samples per second, but you can go up uh, to 96 and even further for professional systems. So for our purposes, we can stay at 44.1 kilohertz or 44,100 hertz if we like today. Uh, the next thing is setting the input. <clears throat> Remember, on one of the tools on our uh, Audacity software, we had to identify the audio host, <clears throat> which we will go into the program in just a second. I'll show you how mine's set up. And then if you have multiple devices plugged in, then you'd have to specify those here. You would also specify the input, whether you have an internal microphone, an external microphone, or, or some other type. And then how many channels the input is, either mono or stereo, or generally the options. All right, let's now do a, a test recording in the tutorials. Uh, that's number four, making a test recording. And we will see a couple of settings we need to just set up to make sure. One is um, turning on the monitoring or start monitoring, which will allow us to sort of see the levels of how much microphone input coming in. This is an Im important stage in recording because one of the things we want to avoid in any kind of recording is clipping. Clipping is where the gain level, uh, both uh, on the input and the output, either one of those, uh, exceeds uh, the, the ability of it to represent that without uh, distortion. And you'll see on our VU meter here, what you have are minus dB uh, levels here. So in digital recording, you can go all the way up to zero dB without getting any clipping. In the old analog recordings, you would find what was called unity gain, which would be about here where you would have a zero dB and then you'd have a plus tw up to say 12 or 15. And usually you in analog recording, you could go into the plus areas a little bit without adding distortion. <clears throat> but you would always shoot for unity gain, which would be around zero. So on digital, we don't have any kind of unity gain point that gives us that reference. Zero is our unity gain, meaning that you can accurately represent the sound all the way up to a level which gives you to zero. But you don't want to aim for zero because once you go beyond zero, you're going to get clipping and the, the way digital conversion works, it will not represent the sound and it will be a, a distorted or a clipped signal. So what you want to aim for is somewhere around minus six, maybe a minus 12. What that gives you is a, a little bit of headroom that if you do make a sound suddenly that is a little bit louder, you're not going to get into clipping. Um, you can even go a little bit lower than that, maybe between 6 and 12, and you, sh you should be able to get a pretty good recording. Uh, if, if you go much below, say, minus 24, minus 30, you're probably not getting a good enough level to capture uh, the best quality of sound on the input. So what we want to do is when we get over to uh, 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 Audacity, we will hit this little arrow button on, beside the microphone, which will allow us to, to start monitoring. Uh, so that's a, that's a bit of important information about clipping. You can also go into the waveform, uh, zoom into the waveform once you've recorded it and check to see if there was clipping on this and we'll, we'll show you how uh, to do that when we, when we get over there. So if you do have clipping then you pretty much need to re-record the, the, the work. It's very difficult to, if you have a lot of clipping, uh, to go back through and correct that. You'll see here if you were to get to the micro level, if you just have clipping in one spot, you could go back through and redraw these with your pencil to get rid of some of the waveforms that are clipped. So there are many different ways you could uh, to uh, control uh, one or two clipping points. But if you are too far over, generally you're going to be having a lot of points that are clipped and then you, you just want to record it again. All right, so that was uh, making a test recording. And then when we get to recording uh, editing,
Uh, one of the things that when we record the sound, we probably will want to try to get rid of DC offset. Uh, this essentially is where we have uh, the sound is put at a zero amplitude uh, level. And how to get rid of that is uh, run the normalize effect, which I'll show you how to do that. I generally run normalize on um, pretty much anything I record just to make sure that the levels are all evened and we've gotten rid of any kind of DC offset that could uh, uh, affect sound. And then we'll, we'll also talk about amplitude adjustment, which normalize will take care of. So normalize is a, is a really good feature. And then we'll show you how to save that file in Audacity. And then if you want to export it into some other kind of format, we'll talk about the different formats, how to do that. All right, so now that's all of the tutorials on your first recording. And later we can come back with other kinds of uh, uh, effect processing. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.